Hey everybody, it's Thanksgiving again, another year, and uh, in keeping with a tradition I've had on this channel for a while, uh, I wanted to do another Thanksgiving. Um, if you don't know, if you haven't seen one of these before, Thanksgiving is basically a series that I do every year uh, at Thanksgiving, oddly enough, about gaming, oddly enough. Uh, the whole goal started about five years back, uh, where I decided I wanted to just kind of start a series that uh, talked about the positive impacts that games have on our lives to sort of work against um, the, the narrative and the common perception that a lot of people seem to have about games is just these violent, awful things, um, and try to help explain and understand how they actually help or bring people together. I usually never know what the video is actually going to be until uh, I sit down to record it, uh, just because it involves a lot of thinking back over the last year. Uh, generally speaking. This year's been pretty calm, uh, all things considered. Uh, I've been dealing with a fair amount of sort of mental things, but I'm finding myself able to work through them a lot more efficiently uh, than, than I did when I was younger, uh, and handling them a lot more healthily, hurting less people in the process, being less immature about it, I suppose. Oddly enough, that happened as I aged. When I look back over the last year of video games, there are a couple that really stood out to me as a powerful, impactful thing, but I've decided to turn those into their own uh, content, so uh, I'm not going to discuss it here. I thought it would be interesting to move away from video gaming and talk about D&D, or tabletop gaming in general, roleplay, I suppose. Tabletop games were incredibly influential on video games and kind of helped godfather them a little bit. Especially RPGs, you know, Dragon Quest pulled extremely heavily from D&D, uh, which pulled a lot from Tolkien. You can trace fantasy back a very, very long way. But the concept of uh, this interactive media, where you've got these stats that increase and customizable characters, uh, and a kind of a grand overarching story with a party of characters that come together, uh, a lot of the things that you see in RPGs are in a lot of tabletop. D&D and Pathfinder were something that I played on and off uh, throughout my life. When I came out to New York, I played it less just because I didn't have a group to play with, necessarily. However, a couple years ago at a convention, uh, somebody very close to me was curious about D&D. And so we went to a Pathfinder session, and it, it wasn't it wasn't a great Pathfinder session. You know, when you throw a lot of random people together, sometimes it gets a little awkward. But, but when we got back, we decided to start just a campaign with uh, a, a couple of my friends. And we started off with a module and just some kind of really basic stuff, and it was just supposed to show the basics and how this thing works. As we played around with it, and some people left and some people joined in, we realized that we wanted to take it further. So after about maybe two years of playing this, very erratically, we'd go months without playing sometimes, just based on people's schedules, we started making it a more regular thing. We got a more defined group of people. We moved it into an original world, and, and now for a good chunk of this year, probably close to six months, uh, we've been prepping and then producing it as a show over on Twitch. And it's been a really exciting thing to work on, uh, not necessarily because we have a large audience, because we don't, but because I'm genuinely really proud of what we're doing with it, just as creators. Working as a freelancer, uh, there's not a lot of distraction from my work. I wake up in the morning, and if I have client stuff to work on, I, I work on that, and if not, I think about what things I could be making for myself. However, my relationship to creating changed a bit once I went actual freelance. When I had a regular job before, and this creative work was stuff that I did away from my job, it was so easy to be constantly enthusiastic about it because it was my break away from the stuff that I didn't care about to do something that I did care about. Now that I'm a freelancer, I don't, I don't care about it any less. I absolutely still care about it a lot, but that's become the problem. Because I care about it, and because now it feels like it's all that defines me, it's very, very easy to get almost paralyzed by feeling like I'm not capable of doing it well or doing it enough. And this last year has been uh, a pretty big struggle regarding that. I've been doing festivals with my first short film, and that entire process, even though positive things have happened, I, my brain is just constantly picking out things about it, every rejection, every time that, uh, that, that, I, that I don't hear back uh, very quickly. Uh, the, the constant fear that I didn't do this well enough and it's not going to pay off and I w wasted everybody's time that was involved with it, all that stuff is constantly in my head. And then when I'm working on a client project, uh, when I'm not fully confident in what it is that I'm making for them, 
I, I just start getting paralyzed and, it, and it's hard to make something. This last year especially has been really difficult for that. It's fascinating because by most objective metrics, I'm doing better now than I ever have. I'm actually supporting myself off of creative work. I have objectively become a better editor. I have a film that has now won awards, including Best of Festival at one of them. But for some reason, it's just difficult. That's where D&D comes in. This campaign that we've been doing every week has been helpful in a couple ways. The first is that it gives me a creative outlet. When I feel like I'm not creating enough, I can look at this character, Philip, this half-orc who thinks that he's a gnome because he was raised by a gnome, and he's incredibly wise and compassionate, but is not very smart, uh, which I guess he would have to be to not realize that he's not a gnome. He started as a dumb joke character where I was just using Joe Grant's cartoon voice, and I was wondering what kind of funny contradictions I could give him! And everything about that character is so much more fleshed out and mature and deeper than I ever thought it would be. Outside of the voice, the voice is still really, really awful. And now when I'm feeling like I just don't know how to write or don't know how to make things, I can look back at this thing where it's like, I gave this guy a character arc on, on the fly, and I've created some moments that I am truly proud of. And part of the reason I was able to create those things is uh, because of another reason why I appreciate playing D&D Weekly. Uh, I don't have a choice but to be creative. I'm there. I'm locked in there for three and a half hours, four hours. And it doesn't matter how I'm feeling about myself, I still need to respond and say things and force myself to actually be creative on the spot, right there. Sometimes it doesn't go as well as I expected, but hey, in those cases, I was asked to do it on the spot, right there, for extended periods of time. And then when something good does come out of it, it's like, hey, I did that on the spot for an extended period of time. D&D genuinely combines a lot of the things that I care about most in my life and there are a lot of the same things that motivated me to get into creative work in the first place. It's the creativity of improvising while also still writing and fleshing out a character and planning out character arcs for yourself and where you want them to be going. It's the collaboration, having those plans changed and made better by the people that you're in the room with and covering for each other and seeing what other people are also capable of and letting them surprise you and surprising them. And it's catharsis. The way that we play isn't really the the murder hobo, oh, let's go have like real wacky, like crazy, oh, I'm gonna have sex with every girl in this tavern. That's not really the way that we play. With all these absurd elements, we keep things very human. And there's several instances where we've just hit something that feels very raw and emotional and where I've gone like, oh, man, I think I just stumbled upon something that's been bothering me and found a way to put it into words that I wasn't able to find uh, out in the real world. And working through it with this character who is wildly different from me in a lot of key ways that help me keep a distance and not feel like I'm just completely exposing myself in front of everybody when I'm possibly not feeling comfortable enough to do that with this topic yet. I'm able to explore it and find a way to process it and deal with it and get input and assistance from people who are close to me. It can be therapeutic, I guess is what I'm getting at. And now tonight, this year for Thanksgiving, uh, we're doing a session that I'm DMing. It's my first time DMing. And what we're doing is this one shot that, that I've made, uh, just based on Redwall, which is one of my favorite things. It's something I've wanted to make a video about uh, for a long time, because up there with like Harry Potter and the usual fare that you'd expect from somebody my age, the Redwall books were incredibly important to me uh, growing up. Through this outlet, I'm getting to share Redwall with a bunch of my friends who don't really know much about it, and seeing them build those characters and watching them respond to the riddles I've crafted for them and try to figure these things out and discover things about the series and kind of fall in love with the, the atmosphere and the music and the characters. It's really nice. It's provided this huge conduit for me to express things uh, in, a, in a very self-driven and creative way that, that, that are difficult to do through any other medium. You know, video games can't allow for this kind of open-end creativity because, simply put, having graphics and having a world and having code and everything that needs to function puts constraints on it. But the sheer open-endedness of tabletop, of D&D, of, D &D, of any of these things that take place almost entirely in the theater of the mind, it's really powerful stuff. And it's funny, because growing up, there was still a lot of stigma around tabletop, or at least D&D. 
uh, specifically. At least among certain groups of people, because they were being fear-mongered to by people who had something to gain by making D&D, or Pokemon, or Harry Potter, or whatever the flavor of the month was, uh, by making it out to be this evil satanic thing that's corrupting your children. Either to make money, or to build a following, or to uh, make themselves feel better, I don't know. I, I don't know what possesses you to go out and just lie about things like that, uh, to that extent. But it also makes me happy that there are things like The Adventure Zone, things like Critical Role, things like Dice Camera Action, all these different shows that are popping up and showing what you can actually do with this incredibly creative and open medium that is... It, there's a rule set. You know, it was created by people who made the basic rules, but each game is its own individual thing that is more or less made by the people playing it. And it's really phenomenal. And I'm happy that we're doing this thing with The Natural Ones, and we're producing this show that I'm intensely proud of, if only because I get to go back and relive that stuff that we did on the spot. I don't care if nobody else ever watches it. It's, it's there for me, and I appreciate being able to look back at it. And as much as people can complain about fanbases being annoying or whatever, I, I'm happy to see how popular D&D and Tabletop is getting now. I personally think it's something that can only help us become a more empathetic society. Anyway, I think I've ran a little bit long on this one, but uh, thank you for watching. And if you feel like checking it out, uh, head over to The Natural Ones on Twitch. Uh, I've got the link like right here. I really do think we've got a unique campaign. There's a lot of homebrew stuff that we've come up with, some interesting mechanics, and it's a, it's a very heavily character-driven game with a lot of uh, great actors and writers involved. Anyway, you guys take care. Happy Thanksgiving.